Welcome to another edition of the Blue Ridge Bobcats Coaches Show here on Bobcats TV on YouTube. Joined alongside special player guest, Danny Martin, the veteran, and head coach Lloyd Tech Semlika. I'm Brett Wiseman. Fellas, not the weekend we wanted. Picked up a point uh, against the Danbury Hattricks. That's, of course, something to uh, something to be proud of, to be able to pick up a point uh, against a team like that that has the pedigree that they do, but uh, obviously wanted a better result. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, always would like to see a uh, uh, win, but um, yeah, the first game was pretty good. You know, getting a getting a point. Uh, there were some calls, obviously, we uh, disagreed with, and uh, believe the game should have go um, in different direction than it went. But uh, you know, there's been a good things to take out of that game, and you know, as always, you find some negatives too. What we're still trying to work on, especially playing a team we haven't played this whole uh, the whole season. You know, uh, they are very structured. Um, obviously, a very good team won a championship last season. Um, so it's good to see somebody else playing a little different style of the hockey. And again, it shows us the flaws in our game. What we have to get better and work on. Yeah, Danny, what what did you see from uh, from your player perspective over the weekend, good and bad? I mean. <sighs> Can you turn it down a little bit? Yeah. Just what I can hear myself. Yep. It's really loud. Um, obviously, the first game with a 2-1 game, one nothing going in to the last five minutes, we played really well defensively. I would say um, we're, we constantly get penalties late. Sometimes we sometimes we feel like it's the ref, sometimes it's us, but regardless, um, that's just something we got to learn to play through. Um, so I would just say – the breakdowns are always on us. We watch it on video. We see it. Um, so we, we're really – what we saw last weekend is that we're capable of playing really good hockey and then we're capable of kind of falling back and falling back into bad habits. So we saw a lot of that um, in the last five minutes, which, you know, that was a good game. Teams tend to come in here, underestimate us. And then the second games, that's when – and Coach said it to all of us – teams – realize okay this is a real hockey team they show up they give it everything they have and at that point that's when we can't collapse we have to still keep playing our game which we have a very structured game that coach shows us we all know how to play it and sometimes we just lose track of that and that's when <clears throat> it ends up how it ended up later in the Saturday game yeah coach I, I feel like that Friday night was really one of the better played defensive games all season long uh, from the Bob. That was a playoff style game. It was tight checking. And there was not a whole lot of room on either side, but a, a skilled team like Danbury, you guys were able to, to effectively shut them down. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, and, uh, you know, Danbury kind of overcame that uh, they saw and they felt that we were playing good defensively. So instead of them trying to get inside of the zone clean and try to uh, start chipping the pucks, put them, you know, put them deep, and they've been uh, very heavy on the forecheck. And that's, uh, you know, when we start um, kind of just giving the pucks away or, you know, not communicating in these zone, that's when we get a couple, few times in the trouble. And, you know, obviously, like Danny mentioned, like, we have a structured game, but when it, ga when it comes to, like, a one game, one nothing game, we just get away from what works for us, right? Like, the most of the game is one nothing, and the second half of the game we see that some guys want to do a little bit more and so of putting it deep. You know they want to make that extra move in the neutral zone, and they're looking for the pass to the middle and so of keeping it on the board. Um, so that's something again. You know I always say that we're a very young team, so uh, the guys are learning. Um, you know looking to get that experience, and they're learning from their mistakes, or you know at least that's what I see. We hope they learn from the mistake. And that's why it's great to have to have somebody like you, Danny, on the team that that's played in this league for for as long as you have, and you've seen pretty much everything and anything this league has has to throw at guys. And I think it's important for you to be here to to kind of show these young guys what it's like in this league and what it takes to win in this league. Well, a big thing that what Coach just said, and when when teams kind of adapt and with our structure, what I've noticed is that. Okay, so we have our systems that we play, and again, it goes back to what I said about the second game. They come out different. Well, these teams are experienced, and they're really good. So if they don't win or if they don't have the game they want to have, 
they're going to adjust and we're also going to adjust but when they come at us hard we have to be able to play um without being robotic without playing exactly what the system is not the whole game but just for that split play if you have to make a decision like coach gives us set face-offs well often we make the set face-off even though something else is open and you can adjust on the fly and that's just something that um really would take us to the next level something that we're working on um and going forward just being consistent and adapting on the fly you know like danny said it's 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 a read and react right right you have a set face off and we win the face off and us instead of actually taking the look uh we just play the puck right away where you know that that face off play uh what we talk about but a lot of times you know no matter we have a set uh set a face off or anything regroup anything we always talk about multiple options we talk about you know your panic option we talk about the option what most likely on a good structure team is going to be open we talk about on the options what if you know they are not as structured so it's something where the players when they get a puck they have to take a look you know they have to make a step up the ice they have to take a look uh, protect the puck and again if they if none of that's gonna show there's always the panic option what they have right and and especially against a team coming up like carolina that has seen the bobcats the most and, and vice versa two more against them a team that plays the kind of structure that they play, that it, a lot of times it, it's hard to find space against them. It's important to have those four or five or six options in the back of your head. All right, if this happens, I'm going to pivot to this. If this happens, I've got to shift that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, Carolina, is a, we talk about all the time, feels like um, they're, they're a good team, but this is the – this is the games I want to call. This is the games these guys want to play. This yeah. is the games where we get better, right? This is the teams we want, need to overcome, where we need to learn from our mistakes, and we can't just be talking about it, but we need to actually show it, right? And we have two more opportunities over here against Carolina to show it. So You got two more against Carolina, Danny, and then two more against Columbus next weekend, the two teams that – you face the most outside of Mississippi and Motor City this season, sir, or Baton Rouge, I should say, in Motor City this season. So two regional rivals and, and two teams that you want to get one or two of these against them before the year's over. Right. I mean, we've brought it to them in several games. It's it's never an easy game. Um, they're a really good – both these teams are good at playing from behind. Um, so we really need to just go ahead, play our game, and learn how to play with a lead. Um, of course, it would feel great to, to come out with a win. A big thing that, um, like you were saying, is they 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 have two or three plays that they're able to make on the fly. So if we make a mistake, they're going to easily have room to, to make something happen. So we just need to play as consistent as we can within the systems that Zimmy coaches and um, just work really hard because – Hard work is it really pays off against these teams. You know, there's a thing in hockey if you know, if one guy makes a mistake, the other guys, the rest of the four guys on the ice should know what to do from that point on, right? It's not like one guy gets a mis make a mistake and everything breaks down. And that's what we see a lot in our game too, right? We need to be able to one guy, you know, maybe falls, maybe he's not a right F1 on the four check, so then the F2 is going to become an F1, so the other guys need to know what to do, and that's something we've been, the second half of the season, talk about more and more, and finally getting those more, you know, when I say structure, it means a lot of things about, like, a four check and uh, that kind of a stuff uh, to finally get to talk about, and, you know, there's a, guys from a different different teams coming in there's a guy who never played any structured hockey uh there's a guy who doesn't understand fully the four check penalty kill power plays and so there's always the things we're trying to develop and work on yeah danny you you've been one of the one of the veteran presences here from pretty much the, the start of the season so uh, let's focus on you for a minute what what's your journey been like uh, to get here and uh, talk about just how great the the fans have been as, as things have grown over the season i mean Coming in, you don't know what to expect. Any new team, you don't know what to expect. Um, like, you can look at Motor City, for example. That's kind of what I thought was going to happen here, just, you know, be a team that is in the league. And I, I like Motor City. They're a good team. They're a really good team. 
But if you look at their fan base, they don't get the best support. Um, here, you can tell how it's been growing game to game. You can go, you know, I've made, I've made friends at Subway down the street. They started coming to the games. You know, they wear the pins. They're big fans now. They try to make it every time. They'll be season ticket holders next year. They're going to bring, you know, 10 of their family members because they just enjoy it. Um, the fans have been amazing. Now it's like, if you really go back to the first game where they played Carolina, it was like 90% Carolina fans. And now you can hear the crowd go, Thunderbirds, whatever, and then the other half will be like, go Bobcats, go, and it's a real battle. It feels like a real rivalry, especially, I mean, we have one more of those here, and I know we'll be able to feel that. It'll probably be a huge game um, that's on Saturday, and then um, I can't imagine over the summer how much the fan base will keep growing, and uh, yeah, it's just been tremendous growth. It's obvious. You go around the town, um, people are starting to know there's hockey here, which um, I kind of got to experience that in Carolina as well, where the first few years, it's not, um, it's nothing crazy. And then it gets insane and everybody wants to be a part of the hockey. And it's really feeling like that um, right in year one. And I think what's awesome is the fans, um, they just end up with new friends, new, it's like a, Bobcats family, right? So it's it's pretty cool, and and that's what's really cultivated all year, Sammy. And and I think that you know Saturday will be a point for that to come to a head because, like Danny said, as the games against them have gone on, and, and those fans come up from Winston Salem, there's battles in the crowd just as there are battles in the ice, and all of you on the bench are able to feed off of that. No, absolutely. No, just like the other way, the first couple of games we didn't really have any fans traveling with us to. Um, Carolina, and then every game we go there, we see more and more Bobcats fans to go and support us. So it, it it's been growing, and uh, you know it it's a huge. It feels it's a big like energy for the team, right? Especially hearing the crowd going, and you know I remember the first first game when the guys went on the ice and everybody was quiet. You know, it was um, nobody we didn't know or nobody really knew uh, or seen a hockey game before, right? And so it, it de had developed a big time from the start to this point, and it's going to just keep and keep growing. Yeah, Danny, give me three keys to victory this weekend. Hard work, stay with your guy. If you don't have a guy, find one, and uh, forechecking. Zemi, three keys to victory. For, well, so let's, let's put it this way. Uh, we need to be disciplined on the forecheck, uh, very disciplined. Uh, you know, we need a D to keep it simple on the back end. That would be my key number two. And uh, key number three, when we get in that old zone and you have no option, you know, let's be assured as soon as the body's going to the net. We know no matter who they got in the net, we have guys who are able to put it in the net. If not, if the guy in front of the net has, you know, he's ready to go, we'll create, we'll create some opportunity. So. And there are still some tickets available for the game tomorrow night in Winston-Salem uh, on the Thunderbirds Ticketmaster website if any of you are looking to make the trip down there. And, of course, we've still got tickets available for Saturday. The Easter Bunny will be here, so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, hockey Easter egg extravaganza, so that'll be a ton of fun. For Danny Martin and head coach Wojtek Zemlika, I'm Brett Wise, and we'll see you tomorrow night from Winston-Salem. We're on the air at 720 on Bobcats TV.